it was really after the Lord's Mers show, um, speaking to the players, the players ooze confidence, spoke to Tom Davis before the game, and Tom said, fabulous week in training, fabulous uh, couple of weeks, really looking forward to it. But it has to be said, uh, over the course of the 90 minutes, just didn't have the fluidity that we've seen in the last couple of games, didn't hit the standards. Crawley deserved to win. And I think the referee ensured that they did win. And that's not, they would have won regardless, but you know, we, we, we had the um, shenanigans with the handball on the line a couple of weeks ago. Well, today's handball that wasn't given was perhaps even more blatant. And I'm sure there's plenty of pictures already on social media. <laughs> uh, Richard Alt has put a very good one on our club photographer who has been on this show several times, um, which is a still of the ball hitting the defender's arm, having been blasted towards him by Connor Jennings. Um, look, I'm not... 100% certain on the handball rule anymore. But the rule certainly is that if the arm is in an unnatural position, I think it kind of is because it's at head height. Or if it denies a potential goal scoring opportunity in terms of it being a shot, then it should be a penalty. And I think uh, I think it is as nailed on a penalty as you will get to. I, I, I guess we should stick with the referee now instead of bouncing back to it then. Clearly had an impact on the game. You're saying not an impact that... Um, was decisive in terms of the result, but it's not the first time the referee has played a pivotal role in a Tranmere home match of recent weeks. No, and look, it sounds as if it's a case of moaning about referees again and again and again, but that referee we had a couple of weeks ago was the best referee I've seen in such a long time. Uh, I forget his name. Was he Australian or something like that? But American. We raising, American. Uh, but it just showed the disparity uh, between the two extremes insofar as he was fabulous and this chap again today. I'm going to give the, a lot of people said that the, the last handball, the referee might have been unsighted. The linesman might have been unsighted. But today it was right in front of him. I, I, I don't know on what basis he didn't see it. The linesman had a clear view. And to be perfectly honest, there was also another little penalty claim at the end. Connor Jennings right on the edge of the uh, area with the line where he was clipped. We didn't get it. I'd have bet my bottom dollar if it had been against us, it would have been given. I don't think we would have won, but we might have scraped a draw. It's just the fact that we had so much momentum going with us at the time of that first penalty appeal. And then after that, it reinvigorated uh, Crawley, gave them that extra resolve, and they didn't really allow us too many opportunities after that, albeit the opportunities that we did manage to generate were not very uh, well finished. Regardless of the referee, regardless yeah. of the decisions that went against Tranmere, the damage was done in the opening 10 minutes, Rob. Um, yeah. Crawley came out of the blocks flying. Tranmere were atrocious. Jeremy Kelly giving Crawley a second minute lead. Jay Williams making it 2-0 after 10 minutes. 2-0 down after 10 minutes at home. The away team is always just going to sit back and allow you to, to do the work from that because they know that you're probably not going to come back into it. And yes, Tranmere got one back through Luke Norris, but there was no way they were going to come back and get a, a win from there. That 10 minutes did the damage. Well, we say that, but in reality, Luke Norris was also uh, had a one-on-one -on -one where you just thought, put your laces through it and whack it before he got the pull the goal back. And he actually sort of semi-scuffed it in the bottom corner. And uh, the Crawley keeper, for those who weren't at the game, uh, is a player who operates at the same altitude as Jason Mooney. He must be six, seven, six, eight, or something like that. So he just got down, tipped it around the corner. And then late on, fabulous ball, a couple of minutes before the end, where Reese McAleer was beat the offside trap, threaded through and slotted it. I think he scuffed it. Not sure, but it ended up going for a corner. We did have opportunities, didn't bury them. But as you say, those first couple of minutes, the goals they scored, watching the Wales game, lovely free kick. But in this case, there's four on the edge of the box. We've got everybody back in the box. And you just think, pick a man up each, because it was so easy just to roll it to the first man, roll it to the second man in space and bends it round past uh, Luke McGee. Uh, and then the second goal, 
Well, player unmarked on the far post who just managed to scramble it home, but nobody on the line. And our two defenders challenging each other. Yes, the ball was swirling. Yes, they missed it. But it wasn't very good defensively. And as Jordan Turnbull mentioned after the game, he said, we're used to scoring early or going a goal up at Prenton Park. But to be 10 goals down, sorry, two goals down after 10 minutes, uh, it just sort of knocked the stuffing out of us. But I also think, given the, the, the... the team today, I'm not sure whether the tactics probably suited the opponents. 